This is DD Vision Network. Hello, welcome to DD Vision Network, where we x ray issues on ICT, business, lifestyle, and innovation. I am Adaza Okiaire, and I'm standing in for the regular anchor, Bayero Agabi. To be part of this show, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com slash Network for exciting videos and reports. And you can also follow us on all our social media handles displayed on your screen. This episode is a bumper-packed one filled with trending news, reports, and digital tips. So sit tight and watch. Hello, I am Bayero Agabi. Welcome you to this new ride. A digital ride that takes you into the lifestyle experience of innovation, tech impact, and new business frontiers. This is DG Vision Network. On a weekly basis, we keep you well informed of developments and trends. Now the tech ecosystem is impacted politics, business, public and private enterprise management, plus how the new digital life can transform your business. I am Bayero Agabi. Join us. August 1st every year is the World Wide Web Day. The World Wide Web Day is a global event dedicated to the celebration of the development and impact of the web. Join us for our special report on the World Wide Web Day 2021 event organized by Center for Cyber Awareness and Development in collaboration with Cyber Africa Magazine and DigiVasion Network. There are popular statues and landmarks that are testament to human evolution and advancement. Our top five segment this week will feature the top five iconic statues in the world. But first, let's catch up with trending issues and development that made news this week. The federal government has approved the renaming of Federal Ministry of Science and Technology to the Federal Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation. According to the government, the name change is to reposition the ministry to drive the innovation agenda and catalyze Nigeria's economic growth. The Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation, Dr. Ogbonaya Onu, stated that the change of name will help meet the needs of all the sectors of the Nigerian economy and all stakeholders by supporting the generation and application of knowledge and innovation to solve social economic challenges as well as providing a policy and funding environment that will establish the national system of innovation. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash Network. Coming up shortly is DD Tech Tips. Using social media platforms requires you to use the features already installed, but another option is you could make your own stickers to reflect the expressions you want. Let's join Follow with what I need as she tells us how to create WhatsApp stickers. Hi guys. I know a lot of us get frustrated after using our ad and money to buy data to access the internet, only to get a notification a few hours later that the data you just bought has expired. And you wonder how come? Well, it is mostly not the fault of the service provider but your mobile phone. So how do I turn up cellular data for specific app on my Android device so I won't be running out of data quickly, you ask? Your girl, for Lawe Wayeni, is here again to help you with that on another exciting episode on Digitech Tips. If you have a smartphone that runs Android 10, the operating system might offer you all the tools you need for the job. First, open settings and go to mobile network. In the Android mobile network settings, tap on data usage. Next, tap on network access. Now you see a list of all your installed apps and check marks for their access to mobile data and Wi-Fi. To block an app from accessing the internet, uncheck both boxes next to its name. You only want to turn off the mobile data access for certain apps you don't use often. Uncheck the mobile data box for those apps and leave the Wi-Fi data checked. Also, if you want the list to include system apps, tap the menu button 
from the top right corner of the screen and select Show System Processes. You can then block internet access for system apps too for mobile data. When you're done blocking apps from accessing the internet on your Android device, close the settings. When you open an Android app that you've blocked from accessing the internet, you get a notification. Do not tap remove because you're going to remove the restrictions. Type cancel instead if you want to continue blocking that app access to the internet and keep using it offline. I believe that was very helpful to you. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com slash Digivasion Network. See you next time. Bye. That was for like giving us tips on how to create WhatsApp status. You're still watching Digivasion Network. I am Adaze Okia in it. Since its invention by Tim Berners-Lee in 1990, the web has gone on to make the internet a more user-friendly place where people can easily share ideas, information, and conduct business. Essentially, the web is a wealth of knowledge. It is a catalyst that has opened up our societies and the world in more ways than we can imagine. And in this month of August, we join the world to celebrate the World Wide Web Day 2021. Let's watch this special report. All we want is for government to please give us more availability of the infrastructure of, uh, of the internet give us more broadband so that wherever you are in the country able to access the internet welcome to the world wide web day event 2021 i am adaze ukiaine reporting live from the prestigious radisson blue hotel ikeja Giari, lagos nigeria now the world wide day 2021 is an annual event to celebrate the impact of the web globally now this epoch-making event is the first of its kind in Nigeria and we're of course here to celebrate with all the industry stakeholders. The World Wide Web Day event is organized by SICARD in collaboration with the Cyber African Magazine and the Division Network. Of course numerous partners such as the NCC, NIDA, Medellin Communications, Cloudflex, IT Rams and all the partners are sponsoring this event. The event, as you can see, the event is in progress with goodwill messages from industry stakeholders. The World Wide Web Day 2021 event, the first of its kind in Nigeria, had in attendance industry stakeholders and dignitaries from various sectors. The theme of the event was creating opportunities for a new digital African economy. The opening address was given by the president of the Center for Cyber Awareness and Development, Dr. Bayero Agabi. The hybrid event was streamed live on YouTube, Facebook, and Zoom, with huge numbers of online participants contributing to the conversations on the influence of the World Wide Web. Dignitaries present at the event include the first president of the Nigerian Computer Society, Alajiladi Ogunleya. President of Association of Telecommunications Companies of Nigeria and CEO of Medallion Communications, Engineer Ikechuku Namani, the former Director, Public Affairs Nigerian Communications Commission, Tony Ojobo, and many others. Speaking virtually, the President of Nigerian Internet Registration Association, Mohamed Rudman, spoke on the need to leverage technology to address pressing challenges. So without education, we'll be left behind. But that education, you know, for me, internet is critical, it's important. Um, it has to be available. Um, even it has to also be affordable because substantial part of Nigerians, for example, if you, you are to put 4G across Nigeria right now, how many people can afford the data bundle? How many people can afford the devices to, to browse that? So let's assume that you solve the problem of availability and affordability. You have another issue of accessibility. A lot of people cannot speak English language. 
you know, and by default, people that can only speak Igbo and Yoruba and Hausa language cannot participate on the internet. So we need to find a way to make it accessible. And I'm rounding up this to say that education is the key. So government should find a way to quickly um, find innovative ways of creating local content in local languages, especially for primary and secondary education. On the importance of the web and internet access, the former Director of Public Affairs, Nigerian Communications Commission, Tony Ojobo, spoke on the need for policymakers to look into areas to enhance digital inclusion for all Nigerians. Well, I spent, I, well uh, this event actually is coming at a very, very uh, crucial time. Uh, when um, the internet usage around the world is facing all kinds of challenges. And... Um, we still have a whole lot of people that are still not connected to the internet. Um, and so uh, this kind of event kind of um, tries to address some of the issues and bring them to our consciousness and the need for policymakers to begin to look at areas that will enhance digital inclusion. Um, a lot of people in the rural communities are still not connected to the internet. COVID-19, for instance, really uh, caught the world unawares. And uh, so many people were disconnected. They didn't have access to information, for instance, that could save lives. Uh, in the rural communities, people were still going to the market. Uh, the protocols were not observed. Social distancing was not observed. And the reason is because there was no information available to them. So the, this seminar uh, is uh, trying to look at where we were, where we are now, and where we should be. Uh, looking at the African economy as it is, we cannot really move forward uh, except there's digital equity and digital equality. In other words, everyone must have access to the internet. Internet has become a fundamental human right, and so there is a need for us to address that, the policymakers, the industry, the equipment manufacturers, Highlights of the World Wide Web Day event include goodwill messages from the Director General of Nigerian Information and Technology Agency NICDA, Marlon Kashifo Inoa, the President of Nigerian Computer Society, Professor Adeshino Shodia, President of Digital Bridge Institute, Engineer Mohammed Ajia, and many others. There were insightful panel sessions along with awards given to speakers and organizations for their impact in the digital tech space. The panel sessions focused on issues such as cybersecurity, increased inclusion of women in ICT, and financial inclusion. The reality is before now, the approach to assess the body has not been ideal. Uh, we've also for a long time depended on uh, the traditional banking option, which is depending on the banks to finance you. That has not worked because the banks don't have the right structure for the kind of investment that is needed. You need long-term investment. You need very cheap investment. The Nigeria banking system is currently not structured for that kind of uh, funding. So uh, having realized that the private sector is now looking towards more uh, equity-based kind of play, foreign-based kind of play, and uh, the funding is coming, but your project have to have the right structure. It has to have the right potential. What we've seen in the past is that people don't just uh, have the right structure. Instead, your company needs equity investment. You are looking for loan and vice versa. We've seen some of that in the past, so it's been corrected. But uh, the opportunity is there. People know that uh, we've got the market, not just within Nigeria, but across the sub-region. People also know that there's a good return on investment in this space. So all that drives uh, investment into the space. Thank uh, you, sir. It's still a building block, but sure, the investment is coming. Many women standing up in the space of ICT in recent times to also stand as an encouragement for people that are upcoming. I think many a times the issue we have with the girl child coming into STEM is basically because they don't have people to run to. But by the time we have more women coming into STEM as already made leaders, they have the uh, 
the opportunity is there now to go to people and learn. The girl child is very important, particularly when it comes to the deep tech economy we're talking about and all. Because as a woman, you know, we have a special room to even carry better ideas. Thank you. The convener of the World Wide Web Day 2021 event, Dr. Bayero Agabi, the president of Center for Cyber Awareness and Development, spoke on the importance of the internet in this digital era. According to him, access to the internet ought to be a fundamental human right. It is with you to the extent that if you can't hear it, you feel it. It is with you to the extent that it is changing the skill set. It is with you to the extent that it's changing industries. It is with you to the extent that it's eliminating industries and creating new industries that most people never knew. It is with you to the extent that it's creating new skills and eliminating older skills that the world never knew of. You can but discuss this kind of you know, uh, innovation that has brought about this kind of huge change from education to health, the media itself. Today, three -man crew, a three-man crew can come up with something that they can give a television broadcaster a run for their money. Before now, for you to be a broadcaster, you needed a transmitter, you needed um, so many other things, you know, dishes and all of those things and all that, spending billions of naira. Today, you don't need that. You know, there are uh, bloggers, there are YouTubers who smile to the bank every month with over $500,000. That is quite a lot of money. One of the speakers at the event, popular actor and comedian Kunle Ido, a.k.a. Frank Donga, spoke on the influence and opportunities the web avails many youths in Nigeria. Looking for a job, you know, getting admission to schools, you know, getting entertained, everything is now tending towards the use of the internet, health, a whole lot of things. So it's a... Uh, it's, it can be overemphasized that the internet personally to me has been very helpful in my career education as a comedian, as an actor. Uh, I get offers for jobs, invitations to come on projects through the internet. If the internet were to be shut down, uh, I would be restricted to probably the regular 3G phone calls. And maybe that would be affected too. So you can't overemphasize the fact that the internet has come to stay and it has played a very important role in my life personally. And those of very many other people watching, I'm sure. Well, it connects Nigeria to the world and also it makes the world smaller. So what you find is that with the internet, at least um, before, where news travels, uh, it takes longer to get things that are instantaneous both ways in terms of people seeing, uh, putting Nigeria on the map, people seeing more about Nigeria, understanding what we do and understanding that we're part of the progress of the world. So I think it's quite vital to our growth and development. The event provided an avenue to celebrate the impact of the web in different areas and further explore the opportunities to promote a digital Nigeria. The panel sessions also stressed on the need for governments, civil societies and industry stakeholders to collaborate to ensure that more opportunities are created in this digital age. Reporting for the Division Network, I am Adaze Okia Ine for the World Wide Web Day 2021. Thanks for staying with us. That was our special report detailing the celebration of the World Wide Web Day 2021 organized by the Center for Cyber Awareness, Cyber Africa Magazine, and DigiVasion Network. If you're just joining us, this is DigiVasion Network. Please check out our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com slash Network for more reports and informative videos. This is AIT Infotech Network, reaching you from a free town in Sierra Leone. I try the Ghanaian capital. Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. Johannesburg in South Africa. We are in Cairo in Egypt. In Tunis, the Tunisian capital. Cape Town in South Africa. Reaching you from Dubai. 
Hanover in Germany. Live from Chicago, Las Vegas in the United States of America, Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. We are in Beijing, China. In London, England. I am Bayero Agabi. Join us. Coming up is top five segments with Gideon Tobiola. This week we bring you the top five iconic statues in the world. Sculptures, images, writings, statues, and all kinds of structures can be seen in every major cities in the world, like one standing right behind me, and that one belongs to the great legend, Fela and Nicola Pocuti. I am Gideon Tobiloba. Today we are looking at the top five most iconic statues in the world. And standing on my number five, we are doing five to one. So standing on number five is the Tinker in Paris. Among all world famous statues, the Tinker is a bronze sculpture by Augusta Rodin, placed on a stone pedestal. Rodin first conceived the figure as a part of his work, The Gates of Hell, commissioned in 1880. But the first of the familiar monumental bronze castings did not appear until 1904. The work shows a nude male figure of over life size sitting on a rock with his chin resting on one hand. The statue is surrounded by a sprawling garden and a museum. The Tinker is located in the center of the city, so it's not difficult locating it whenever you choose to go there. So from there, we go to Denmark for number four. And on that number four is the Little Mermaid in Denmark. The Little Mermaid in Denmark is a bronze statue by Edvard Eriksson, depicting a mermaid becoming human. The sculpture is displayed on a rock by the waterside at the Langelini Promenade in Copenhagen, Denmark. Based on the 1837 fairy tale of the same name by Danish author, Hans Christian Andersen. The small and unimposing statue is a Copenhagen icon and has been a major tourist attraction since its unveiling in 1913. In recent decades, this monument has become a defacement for vandals and political activists. And from there we go to number three. And on number three is the Mowai Easter Island in Chile. Mowai Easter Island in Chile is a very special monument. Easter Island Heads, popularly known as Mowai, is another strange yet most famous sculpture in the world. They are monolithic human figures carved by the Rapani people on Easter Island in eastern Polynesia between the years 2050 and 1500. Nearly half are still at Rano Raraku, the main Mohai quarry. But hundreds were transported from there and set on stone platforms called Ahu around the island's perimeter. It has also been maintained that most of these statues have bodies buried inside the ground, which speaks volume of the ancient Easter Island civilization. The most interesting part about these statues is their detailing and how people from that time created monolithic sculptures. A lot of statues with head jutting out of the land and they found on the island which looks so fascinating amidst the infinite grasslands. You are still watching the top five most iconic statues in the world. Right behind me here is another iconic statue in Lagos State that belongs to the late chief Mko Abiola. All right, now going to number two is the Christ the Redeemer statue in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Christ the Redeemer is an art deco statue of Jesus Christ in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, created by French sculptor Paul Landowski and built by Brazilian engineer Aitor da Silva Costa in collaboration with French engineer Albert Cocot. Romanian sculptor Giorgio Leonida fashioned the face constructed between 1922 and 1931. The statue is located at the peak of the 700 meter, that is 2,300 feet, Cocovado Mountain in the Tujuka Forest National Park. 
a symbol of Christianity across the world, the statue has also become a cultural icon of both Rio de Janeiro and Brazil. And this statue was also voted as one of the seven wonders of the world. Now this takes us to our number one on the list. And standing on number one is, of course, the Statue of Liberty, New York. The Statue of Liberty is regarded as one of the most popular sculptures and famous statues around the world. It's a colossal neoclassical sculpture on Liberty Island in New York Harbor within New York City in the United States. It was gifted to the United States from the people of France and was designed by French sculptor Frederick Auguste Bovy and its metal framework was built by Gustave Eiffel, best known for the world-famous Eiffel Tower. Since 1886, the statue has been with the United States, and today it stands as an insignia of liberty and democracy. The statue's copper torch was later replaced with 24-carat gold torch, which is noticeable from a distance. That's the top five most iconic statues in the world. Unfortunately, no Nigerian statue made it into the list, even though we have a number of them hanging everywhere in major cities in the country. On this note, I put a curtain on this segment for today. My name remains Gideon Tobiloba. Back to you, Adazel. Thanks for staying with us. And that was the top five segments. With that, we'll come to an end of the show for this week. To watch a replay of this show, please go to www.youtube.com slash Network to see it and many other videos. You can also reach us on our social media platforms displayed on your screens. On behalf of the regular anchor of the show, Mayuro Agabi, thank you for watching. I am Adazet Ukiahine. Join us again next week. Bye for now.